Bien, bueno, eh, buenos días a todas y todos. En el marco del 180 periodo de sesiones, vamos a dar... Good morning, everybody. We are starting this hearing uh, that has to do with the case 13163, Carlos Ibarra et al. against Colombia. Today with me are commissioners Joel Hernández, Commissioner Estuardo Ralón, and also Commissioner Julissa uh, Mantilla. In addition, we have the Secretary of Petition and Cases, Marisol Blanchard, and her team. And also we have the interpreters and the team of the Executive Secretariat. Uh, I would like to let the parties that there is simultaneous interpretation for those who request it. it Below on the screen, there is a glove. And if you need interpretation, you can choose interpretation there. And also, we would like to let you know that we have closed caption of the hearing for those people who are uh, impaired. Also, we are um, broadcasting this hearing on Facebook and on Twitter. And now I would like to give the floor and to greet the representatives of the petitioners and the representatives of the state. Now I would like to give the floor to the executive secretary, Marisol Blanchard. Thank you, Madam President. The instant case has to do with the alleged responsibility of the state for the forced disappearance of Carlos Algarra and other officials of the attorney general office by or in the hands of paramilitary groups. In 2021, the commission notified the parties that they decided to apply Article 36.3 of its rules of procedures in order to join the status of admissibility and merits. The current hearing is aimed at receiving the statements of the alleged victims and so that the parties present their allegations on admissibility and on the merits and the measures for reparation that they are requesting. Thank you, Marisol. So first, we will give the floor to the alleged victims. And after that, we will continue with the allegations of the parties. To, for you to have an idea, the petitioners will have eight minutes. Uh, if that, if, is that correct, Marisol? In order to present the statements and for the questions that the petitioners have, and then the state will have eight minutes to ask. And after that, the commission will have five minutes for questioning uh, the petitioners. And after that, we will have the allegations of the parties. Uh, the Both parties will have 16 minutes. And then the commission will have the opportunity to make some additional questions based on the time left. And if there is a still time left, there will be some time for the petitioners and the representatives of the state to answer the questions made by the commission. We will start first with the statement of the alleged victim, that is Mrs. Osorio. On the screen, we have a clock, a timer that uh, controls time. So please, I would like to give the floor to Mrs. Osorio. Rosa Osorio, can you turn on your camera? Good morning. Now I would like you to indicate your full name, place of birth and place of residence. Good morning. My name is Rosa Cecilia Osorio Calderon. I was born on January the 3rd, 1970 in Valle de Rosa. Thank you, Mrs. Rosa. Now you will have eight minutes to present your statement. And please remember the remind the clock, the time. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Commissioners. Good morning, Mrs. Rosa. Mrs. Rosa, can you tell in this hearing the name of your husband and his work? Good morning, my husband was Gavilo Carrera Huancha, and he was an investigator of the CTI of the Office of the General Attorney. 
how long ha, ha, had been working there? Six years. Did you have children? Uh, please state your names and how old they were when your husband disappeared. Yes, we had two children uh, at the time of his disappearance. Um, I had a boy of six years old and I have a girl of three years. Miss Rosa, let's talk about the facts of March the 19th, 2000. Can you tell us about the judicial team and the goal of the judicial team? The team was made up of seven members, four uh, investigators, a dentist, a forensic official, and a doctor. The purpose of the team was to ex exhumate a body and they were intercepted by an armed group that was an illegal group. Miss Rosa, do you know if the commission or the team was accompanied by, by police agents? No, there was no security in the area where they were to collect the evidence. Miss Rosa, when you and other family members realized that your husband was disappeared, that he was not coming back. My, I uh, understood on March the 10th about the situation because four members of the team were in the municipality of Kodasi in the CTI unit and three were here in Bashadupar. I received notice on March the 10th. I went to the site of the CTI of the prosecutor office of Vashadupar. And what happened then? When did you receive information regarding the disappearing of your family members? Each of us learned this in a different way. Uh, we, they were expected to come home, but family members uh, realized that there was an issue because they were delayed. And each of us learned about the situation in a different way. We decided to go on March the 10th to the site and around, around 10 in the morning, we were at the office of the public prosecutor and they were trying to report our family members about the situation. What is the information that the office of the public prosecutor gave you regarding your husband and his situation? When we had the meeting, I remember that they told me that the team were kidnapped they used the hypothesis of a kidnapping, that they were going to be returned during a time or after a time, they decided to follow the thesis of a disappearance. How long were you waiting until uh, for your family members to return home? We were wa we remained waiting for six, seven months because their first theory was that they were kidnapped and that they were going to return. In fact, when we presented the case before the different judicial authorities or even in the Red Cross, I remember that they requested medication, clothes, because there was a possibility to have a contact with the group, the paramilitary group, and we expected for them to return how your life has changed over all these years and how the lives of your children and the life of the mother of Danilo changed over these years. Over these 21 years, our lives changed completely. For my children, Danilo was their support. He supported our home. We have a lot of life projects in order for our children to be successful. Danilo's mother uh, depended on him as well. He supported his family as well. Miss Rosa, can you tell me how 
the disappearance of Daniela impacted on your children, on your children? Mrs. I just would say that significantly because now my children do not want to assume the fact that their parent is not going to come home. Uh, they try to avoid the situation sometimes. And they ask about this case. Miss Rosa, taking into consideration this impact on your family, have you received any type of reparation? No, Mrs. Never. Or other family members of the different members of the team, they do they receive any or did they receive any reparation? No, I believe that there are two families that uh, whose administrative complaint was dismissed and five families are still waiting, but they have not received any kind of reparation. Ms. Rosa, taking into consideration what you're saying, uh, what would you consider that could be a good reparation? Miss, first of all, I would like to say that we want for them to be found, for them to tell the truth. We need justice. And if it's possible, we would like to receive reparation for all the damages caused in this case because I have worked a lot in order or for my children to be able to thrive. Sorry, continue. And there is a long way ahead, especially with regard to education. We need to have reparation, a compensation. Ms. Rosa, in order to end, you would like to add anything and, or there is anything that you would like to tell the commission? No, madam. Thank you, Mrs. Rosa. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Madam President. So we are concluded the questioning of the representation of the victims. Thank you, Ms. Rosa, and thank you, the petitioners. Now I would like to give the floor to the state so that they can ask questions to Ms. Rosa. You have eight minutes for that. Good morning, Ms. Rosa. The state of Colombia would like to express its feelings of solidarity because of the loss of your husband, Danilo, in the fact of March the 9th, 2000, and it won't make any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rosa. Now we will continue with the statement of Matilda Bernard, an, another alleged victim. I would like for you to turn on your camera, please. Good morning. Ms. Matilde, please, can you indicate your full name, your place of birth and your place of residence? Good morning, Madam President. My name is Matilde Bernal Arena. I was born on March the 14th, 1945. I was born in the city of Sandoval. And are you living there right now? I, I got married. I am in, living in Valladupar. Thank you, Ms. Matilde. Now I would like to give the floor to the lawyer so that she can make some questions to you for eight minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. 
I don't introduce myself. My name is Jomari Ortegon. I belong to, to the group of lawyers representing the alleged victims. Good morning, Mrs. Matilda. I would like to make you some questions regarding your family. Who was Carlos Arturo Ibarra? Carlos Arturo Ibarra? Was the judicial investigator of the CTI of Bashubudupar. And what is your relationship to him? We had a very good relationship. He was a very nice person. She, he was very kind to his siblings, with his nephews and nieces, who was a loving person. How long had he been working in the office of the public prosecutor? Carlos was, had been working for almost eight years in the office. Who was he living with? He was living with us, his parents and his three siblings. The eldest uh, sibling is Amales Ibarra Bernal, the second is Nancy Ibarra Bernal, and the third sibling is Enrique Ibarra Bernal. They are three siblings. When was the last time that you saw your son, Carlos Arturo? The last time I saw him was on March 6, 2000. On that day, uh, that day was a Tuesday, and he was about to travel to Rodasi because he was working there. He came to uh, the town, to our house for 15 days to visit us. And on Tuesday, he said goodbye because he had to travel because of work. Miss Matilde. When did you realize that your son was not coming back, that your son was kidnapped by a military, a paramilitary group? Because my daughter, Nancy Barra, called me on the phone and she was told that Carlos and his six colleagues went to work in Verdesia and they did not return. So she called me on the phone on March the 10th at 6 a.m. Miss Matilde, what did you do? What did your children and your husband do when you realized about these facts? After the facts, we decided to go all together to the office of the CTI to check if this was true and to talk to the director of the CTI that it was Alvaro Vidas. And he confirmed this information that they were taken. What has happened to you in these 21 years of search? These years have been very painful for us, especially for me as a mother. It has been so hard. Miss Matilde, did you suffer any impact on your health, on your husband's health, on your children's health? I don't, but my husband has. After the disappearance, he has high blood pressure because of what happened. Which actions of search have you and your husband and your son carried out? Well, we have done everything. We have made walks. We have gone to uh, everywhere with uh, shirts, with pictures of them. We had 
We have been everywhere trying to find out what happened to them and where they are. It's been 21 years and still we don't know where they are buried, where the remains of my son and his six colleagues are. Ms. Matilda, apart from the actions for search, the family members have carried out. Do you know if any actions have been carried out? Has anyone been convicted for these facts? I know about the conviction of um, Etiren and Tobar. He was the boss. He was the one, the, the, the boss of the uh, gang that uh, disappeared him at the orders of Baba, and they have both been convicted. Ms. Matilda, Matilde, you have received any sort of compensation, either you or your family members? No, I haven't received any of that, neither has my family. And has any of the family members of the seven officials who were disappeared, have they received reparations? No, none of us have received compensations. Ms. Matilda, do you know if any of the members of the families have been threatened? Uh, yes, at the beginning. A family member of the colleagues, well, Claudia, Claudia and someone else, Paulina, they were coming and a, a motorcycle approached them and said, if you attend the uh, hearing of El Tigre in Barranquilla, you will be disappeared just as they were. So Claudia came to me and told me, because she, uh, Paulina went to the hearing, but Claudia didn't because she was afraid something would happen to them because she has children. But the other person did go to the hearing in spite of the threats. Ms. Matilde, how would you, what would you feel would be a good reparation for you? What's important in terms of reparations, if for me to receive the remains of my son and also assistance from the state because we've suffered many things and we were left in a terrible situation because he was everything for us. Ms. Matilde, have you received any sort of uh, psychosocial assistance? Well, we have a psychologist. Is she a state-provided psychologist? No, it's, she's not from the state. She's from an um, organization, PASOL. Ever since my son disappeared and his colleagues, they have been um, helping us and providing us psychological support. Ms. Matilde, thank you so much. Is there anything I haven't asked but you would like to tell to the commission? I want the commission to help us get out of this. It's been 21 years of suffering, trying to find him. We just want him to bury him as he deserves, him and his six colleagues. Thank you very much, Ms. Matilde. Thank you so much, Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Matilde. I will now give the floor to the state in case um, they want to ask you any questions. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Good, uh, good morning, Ms. Matilde. The state would like to say once again and express its solidarity on the loss of your son, Carlos, and the facts occurred in March 9th, 20, 2000, and will abstain from asking questions. Thank you. Okay, thanks to so the state. I will now give the floor to my colleagues. Uh, the commissioners, in case they want to ask any questions, first to Doña Rosa. I hope she she's still on the session. Ms. Rosa? Yes, yes, ma'am. 
I'm gonna give the floor now to the commissioners in case they'd like to ask you any questions and then to Miss Matilde, but we're going to start with you. Would any one of any of my colleagues would like to to ask anything to Miss Rosa? Yes, Vice President Mantilla. Good morning, President. Good morning to everyone here with us at this hearing, especially to Ms. Rosa. I would like to greet you all with all my respect, not only for your being here, but for your historical presence in the search for truth and justice. It's, I don't have questions. So I, I would like you to please tell us in this search for justice that you and other family members have carried out by coming to the commission, but also to the media, the hearing there was, the internal hearing, and all of these uh, stages. Have you ever been accompanied by the state authorities or was this uh, only the work of the family members in this case of you? Ma'am, as a family, we have searched on our own for these 21 years. We never stopped searching. And and we never found we would we found many people who we call our sponsors who helped us in these 21 years of uncertainty because we don't know the truth now what happened to our family members it's been 21 years our family members are dying without learning the truth no one was there for us no cycle the we received no psychological assistance we only had the presence of an organization called FASOL since March 20th, 2000, when we met them, they have always been there providing us psychological support. And also the group of attorneys, the group of EQUITA each time we uh, visit them, uh, we have a hearing or anything, they are there. We would like to thank them for always being there, holding our hand. And we hope we will find them because really it's been 21 years and still we haven't been able to, to leave the search. Okay, thank you, Madam Rosa. You've already said this when Ms. Ortegon asked you, but I would like you to tell us a bit because when someone goes missing, sometimes we just think that they just disappeared, that they vanished. But I would like to ask you how your plans for your life, for your children, for your family, how have they changed? How do you think your life would have been like if this hadn't happened? What changed? during these years. We as a couple, we had so many projects, so many ideas to, for our children, for our children's future, to give them a good education. If this hadn't happened, our lives would be completely different. They wouldn't have been this, what we have had. Thank you, Ms. Rosa. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Commissioner Mantilla. Commissioner Coel Hernandez. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I would like to um, especially greet Ms. Rosa Osorio. Um, you, have, you and your children have all my solidarity. I would just like you to tell us something. What kind of support have the authorities of the public prosecution have given you after the unfortunate disappearance of your husband? Have they approached you? 
in terms of economical support, moral support, psychological support. Good morning, sir. Sir, truth be told, we have felt abandoned by them because for me, the public prosecution or the general attorney's office, it hasn't been It hasn't provided us the support we hoped since they are the officials of the uh, public prosecutor and they didn't behave as we were expecting. They, they did not provide psychological assistance. There was no emotional support from them. Maybe one or two friends, people we knew did approach us to see how we were, but really I have felt completely abandoned by the state. And of course, economically, none of the seven families have been compensated. Thank you, Ms. Rosa. I don't know if Commissioner Suardo would like to ask anything. Good morning, President. I would like to greet everyone. I have no questions. Thank you, Executive Secretary. No? Ms. Rosa, I know your attorney already asked, but before wrapping up this part, are there is there anything else you think you haven't shared with us that you would like to, to say before finalizing this section? Anything else you would like to say again or something uh, you forgot or something you weren't asked and that you would like us to know? Ma'am, first of all, for us, it is fundamental to find them, to know the truth, to know what happened to them. We need to find them. It's been 21 years of uncertainty. For us, that's a slow death. We've been slowly dying for these past 21 years. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rosa. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you for being here. I hope your children and your family members are with you because it's very difficult to um, testify here. So thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Have a nice day. I will now give the floor to my colleagues to see if they have any questions for Ms. Matilde de Bernal. Do you have any questions for her? Ms. Matilde, do you hear me? Great. Well, my colleagues, the commissioners are going to ask you if you will have anything else. Ms. Mantilla, thank you, Madam President. Ms. Matilde, good morning. Thank you so much for being here, for having shared your testimony. But once again, thank you for those years of search of commitment, which must have been so very difficult. And just like in the case of Ms. Rosa, I would like to respectfully greet you and thank you for everything you have been through. I wanted you to tell us, please, if during these years that as a mother, you have been looking for your son. And I know that in some statements you're saying my thumbs up and I'm not, I don't know the truth. Have you received anything from the state? Have you, have the state has the state been there for you? Have you been offered more clear clarifications? You said you received psychosocial assistance, but not from the state. How would you say the state's response has been in this over 21 years of search? The state has had no consideration for us. They, the state has not been there for us after 21 years of this pain of not knowing where my son is buried so we can um, give 
him his final resting place. Four fathers of four families have died already, and we want the other parents to know the truth before we die so we can bury them as they deserve a Christian burial, the Christian burial they deserve. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Commissioner Hernandez, do you have any questions? Yes, Madam President, I would like to uh, respectfully greet Ms. Matilde Bernal with all my solidarity. You have my heartfelt condolences on the disappearance of your son. I would like to ask you if you have been intimidated or threatened for participating in the search for your son, specifically in the investigations that are being carried out. No, I have not been threatened. Just what I said before, the other time before the the El Tigres hearing in Barranquilla, they um, approached some of the other members and told them that um, if they attended the meeting, the hearing, uh, the same thing would happen to them. Claudia and Paulina, Paulina is the wife of one of the other disappeared men. And one of them said that they, she wouldn't attend the meeting, the hearing because she didn't want to leave her uh, children orphans. And my son, the brother of the victim did attend the hearing, but nothing happened to him. There have been no threats, thank goodness. Thank you very much, Ms. Matilde. Commissioner Ralon, do you have any questions? I would just like to express my solidarity to Ms. Matilde, Madam President. I don't have any questions. Thank you, sir. The secretary for petitions and cases. No, thank you, Ms. Matilde. I know the attorney also asked you, but just is there anything else you would like to say before finishing your statement? Anything you would like uh, you would like to point out? Something that maybe you weren't asked, and you would want us to know. We want the state to be there for us, to provide support for us, so we can find them sooner. That's what we want. We want for 21 years, we've been searching for them. I hope God will give me the help to know what happened to them, why they killed them. We want justice, we want truth. Thank you very much, Ms. Matilde. Thank you so much for your testimony. Just like my colleagues, I would like to send you a big hug with all of our solidarity and your husband as well, who I suppose is there with you and your other children who have been there for you in this search. And my grandchild too. She's here with me as well. She's always caring for us. Ma'am, thank you for this hearing we were expecting it for a long time and you can count on me for any other hearing i will always be at your disposal to reply to your questions thank you ma'am i'm glad that you are um surrounded by family thank you so much for your testimony okay then we have finalized the statements now i will give the floor to the petitioner so it can um, speak for 17 minutes. Thank you. Good morning, Madam President. Good morning to the commissioners. And also we would like to say good morning to the delegations of the state of Colombia and other participants of the hearing. Uh, my name is Mr. Saavedra, Sebastián Saavedra, and I belong to the Restrepo Law Firm. Um, together with my colleague, we will be presenting the allegations on admissibility and the merits of the case. First, I would talk about the preliminary comments and allegations made by the state. And then my colleague, Mr. Escobar, will talk about the merits. And then me, my other colleague will talk about the 
reparations. With regard to the preliminary observations presented by the state in July 2015, we would like to repeat the following allegations. First, that the state of Colombia talks about the fourth instance of the commission. What we are trying to do is to review the contentious administrative uh, proceeding that is in course. And following the jurisprudence of the commission, the petitioner considered that this case should be considered Article 43.2 due to the lack of effectiveness of the criminal remedy or proceeding. Therefore, the allegation regarding the exhaustion of domestic resources or remedies, taking into consideration the jurisprudence of the Inter-American system, uh, talks about the inability of the state to sanction and to repair human rights violations such as forced disappearance. With regard to the criminal proceedings in the ordinary and the justice and peace jurisdiction, 21 years have elapsed since the disappearance of the victims, and there is no certainty regarding the location of the alleged victims. And there is no information regarding the participation of state agents and those who benefited from the disappearance of the alleged victims. And following on the lines of investigation, during the first years, uh, there was the hypothesis of kidnapping, and this created false hopes uh, for the victims. And those hopes extended for seven months because they were expecting to find their family members alive. Third, there are only two people who have been prosecuted and convicted, and they have not participated in the clarification of the facts. And also, the actions of search have remained inactive uh, for years, and they have several failures. Therefore, we consider that the preliminary observations presented by the state should be dismissed by the Honorable Commission so that the Commission can advance on the merits analysis of the case. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Escobar to explain the merits of the case. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for this hearing. Talking about the merits of the case, the state of Colombia says that in this case, there is no uh, forced disappearance since uh, there is no proof action of the state agents. It's important to mention that taking into consideration the regime or the system of international responsibility by third parties, it is enough to show that there has been tolerance by the state agents taking into consideration the violation of the rights considered under the convention. It's also important to say that the commission and the Inter-American Court of have already pronounced regarding the international responsibility of Colombia for uh, creating a legal system that promotes the creation of unified self-defense groups. And there were no effective measures to avoid the risk situation. And in addition, the Inter-American Court has concluded that the state of Colombia is responsible for not complying with its duty Inter-American Court, eh, there are decisions que han or domestic legal decisions that have established the criminal responsibility of public authorities in the consolidation of the Northern Bloc, the South Defenses of Colombia, AUC, whose members have recognized the forced disappearance of the seven members of the initial team. Also, there is knowledge of the paramilitary, paramilitary activities in the region. And that's why the Office of the Public Prosecuted ordered the exhumation of the body of a victim uh, without providing support to the team. And this also shows the responsibility of the state because it did not provide protection for the team. Taking into consideration that 21 years have elapsed from the forced disappearance, 
there are no information regarding their whereabouts and the activities to search the bodies have not been effective or constant and that has created more implications and frustration on the victims as Ms. Rosa and Ms. Matilde have said. With regard to the International Corpus Jury, it's important to observe that there are specific obligations with regard to the search identification and of those who have disappeared. The Working Group on Forced Disappearance and the Committee on Forced Disappearance have talked about the importance of the search process of those disappeared. They have considered that it's essential to recognize that the search is not enough for the reparation of the victims. There should be articulation between the different entities and that the victims should participate in the search process with a differentiated approach. Also, there are several search commissions in the hemisphere that have said that this is an autonomous right contained in the American Convention. This is proved in the thematic hearing held before the Inter-American Commission during the 178 period of sessions. Finally, the Inter-American Court has stressed that there is an obligation of search that is has not to do with the criminal proceeding, but they are supplementary and that this work should be do, done with due diligence so that those responsible, whether individuals or parties or state agents, and that the families of the victims have the expectation uh, to know the whereabouts of their family members or to identify the location of the remains of those victims and the state has the obligation to conduct those inquiries and investigations. There are two convictions against Mr. Jairo Cuadrado and Jorge Cuarenta. They were the commanders of the AUC, but they did not provide information to clarify the truth of the case. In addition, as it has appears in the file, the allegations against Escobar only consider the crime of aggravated crime, but not forced disappearance. In the criminal proceeding, there are five trials that are still open against Quiroz, Monzon, Hernandez, Andrade, and Torres, who were identified as the collaborators and members of the AUC and they are deprived of their liberty, but there are no progress made regarding the clarification of the truth and the finding of the whereabouts of the disappear officials. With regard to Quiroga and Monzon, it could be stated that there were intimidation factors and therefore some witnesses have decided to change their statements, which has affected the possibility of clarifying the truth and also access to justice. Also, together with the lack of act of justice, as Ms. Matilde and Rosa were saying, up to now there were no measures regarding satisfaction, rehabilitation or compensation for the victims. And they have not received any psychological or physical assistance. And therefore the feelings feel uh, neglected. And therefore our organization has tried to support them for the last 21 years. In conclusion, based on the declarations received in the hearing and taken into consideration the written allegations, these representatives request the commission to adopt an admissibility and merits report that declares that the state of Colombia is responsible for violation of articles 3, 4.1, 5.1, 5.2, 7 .1, 8.1, 13.1, 19.21, 22.1 and 22 of the American Convention in relation to Article 1.1 of the same instrument. With regard to Articles 1.A and 1.B of the Convention Against Torture and Forces of Appearance, and also the Convention uh, Against Torture for the Disappearance and the Torture of the Judicial Officials the threats and intimidation received by the families, and also the situation of grievance of the family members and the lack of due diligence in the investigations in the, to the detriment of their right to have access to truth. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Shomari Ortegon. Good morning, everybody, again. I would like to say how to the family members of the victims because they are the reason of this hearing of, of this proceeding. 
to conclude as a result of the establishment of the international responsibility of the state, we would like to request the commission to adopt preparation measures in favor of the victims. Taking into consideration the statements provided in this hearing by Ms. Rosa Osorio and Ms. Matilde Bernard, what we can see is that are deep damages that occur within the their families, but also that affected the families of the seven members of the judicial team who disappeared. After the hopes of the first years, because of the lack of action by the state, this become an endless search. And this is a situation of anguish and despair because of the lack of identification of the whereabouts of the victims. And this sadness increased over the years. And some of the parents of the disappeared have already died. They died without knowing the whereabouts of their children and sons and daughters. In the case of family Roca, there were threats and uh, the wife and her children, his children decided to exile and those facts were not investigated. In the case, in this case, we would like that the commission takes into consideration some elements with regard to reparation. One, for the commission to take into consideration the non-material and the material aspects, especially everything that has to do with the search and effect on women with regard to the change of roles, because there is a problem that has to do with the family economy that affects especially the wives of those officials who are disappeared. And also we see that there is an increase in the uh, affective and work burdens. Also we have the work for the search with economic implications that that has. And that this is sometimes a third non-remunerated date of work. Another dimension that we think that should be stressed is that the recognition of the work of the women who have been searching their husbands, the search of mothers, daughters, and wives should be recognized. They are taking care, those who are not here, and they are taking care of those memory, their memory. We have heard them working as a collective. They are searching for all of them. They are all important. The state has not recognized the work of these women and these families that are searching for their loved ones. And also it is important that families can participate in all the proceedings and that this participation and involvement includes the necessary economic technical resources for that participation to be effective. We're talking about the actions regarding research and other judicial actions. Also, we need to have uh, assistance and support in order to be able to heal. Even each family has tried to find a way to overcome and to heal. This should be accompanied by the state. Psychosocial support is not only a right of the victims, but it's also the opportunity they have to make sense of what has happened to address pain and to become stronger. The family members of the case uh, had the support of AXOL and other organizations, but the obligation to provide medical care and psychosocial care has not been provided by the state. To conclude, we would like to pay tribute uh, in solidarity to Justa Correa, who died this week. Her search allowed for this case to reach Inter-American Commission. She presented the initial petition before the commission, and we would like to pay tribute to her because we're here because of her uh, bravery. We would like to greet all her family, family members uh, thank you very much. Thanks to the petitioners. Now the state has the floor for 17 minutes. Commissioners, honorable representatives, 
Miss Rosa, Miss Matilde, and other family members. The state of Colombia would like to express its solidarity for the pain of the uh, family members of Mr. Correa, Mr. Bernal, Mr. Carrera Guancha, Mr. Quintero Solano, Mr. Anigio Trocha, Mr. Barroso Valle, and Mr. Martinez for what happened and where unfortunately they passed away on March 9th, 2000. Now, considering the relevance and seriousness of these situations, as well as its consequences for the family members, the state of Colombia would like to point out the activities of the authorities with regards to the activities and the sanction of those responsible, as well as the search for the bodies of the alleged victims. In this case, our delegation will show the Honorable Commission the uh, position of the state in this case with regards to its inadmissibility and the reasons why uh, we consider there is no responsibility, international responsibility for the state of Colombia. First of all, we would like to repeat our non-conformance to the implication of the, sorry, the appliance of resolution one, 2016, by which the commission decided to accumulate the stages. As we have said in our reads, the accumulation of stages in the terms of the resolution violates the states of the of the I'm sorry the rights of the state to defend its legal security and does not aid the procedure. Its practical effect is to move everything to the merit stage. Additionally, on the note we sent to the party that sent to the parties in 2018, mission pointed out that. The petition of the reference, the pending reference of the uh, documentation of the state, because it was it had been received before 2006, and the um, time period in our in the regulations had already passed by. But the state considers that the resolution should not be applied to this case, since the criterion used by the commission is non applicable. The state would like to remind the commission that it sent its observations about the inadmissibility on July 14th, 2015. And the parties were up to date with what's established on rule 30.3. Also, the commission had enough elements to um, pronounce on the admissibility of the issue without accumulating the stages. And that is why the state considers that the commission should not have applied the resolution because the requirements were not being met. Having said this, I will now explain the position of the state with regards to the inadmissibility of this case. First of all, the state considers that there are two causes of inadmissibility. The first one has to do with the lack of exhaustion of domestic remedies, and then the formula of the fourth, fourth international stage. With regards to the first cause, with regards to the lack of exhaustion of domestic remedies, this is done because there has been no exhaustion of the criminal action needed to resolve the issues or the facts of this case and to sanction those who were responsible. Also, there there's no exhaustion of the remedy for direct reparation that should determine the responsibility of the state. With regards to the criminal action, the public, the National Attorney General's office started to investigate the facts as soon as it was informed. For example, it carried out several investigation on the following three months after the investigation, and then it identified young Jairo Esquivel Cuadro as a responsible for the facts in 2001, sorry, on January 9th, 2004, the jury declared him criminally responsible and convicted him or sentenced him to 40 years for extortion kidnapping. Also on April 2002, Mr. Rodrigo Tovar Pupo, alias Jorge Cuarenta, was linked to the investigation. In November 2005, he was accused. And finally, uh, the Jerry declared him criminally responsible for these facts and convicted and sentenced him to 25 years of prison as a co-author um, of the um, murder. 
more recently, new evidence has allowed to link new um, people to the investigation between 2018 and 2021. Resolutions of accusations were issued against Mr. Uh, Moises Segundo Alzades Racino and Mr. Cáceres Calixto López González and Hugo Albertas Berto Manegas Manchado as the alleged authors of the uh, murder, the uh, plot to, um, to kidnap and force disappearance. Right now, they are currently facing a trial. Considering that the criminal investigation is still ongoing, the state considers the case is inadmissible because there is no exhaustion of domestic remedies. The state would also like to point out that with regards to the criminal investigation, no exceptions were presented to the commission that would um, show that the petitioner does not need to exhaust the remedies. So considering the criteria of the case law of the commission, there is no unjustified delay in the resolution of the criminal investigation. With regards to the complexity of the issue, the state considers that the facts that are part of this case are very complex because, they are because there are several factors that the court has pointed out in its case law, such as the features of the uh, punishable behavior being investigated, we're talking about a forced disappearance, or the multiplicity of procedural subjects because 60 people were part of the facts, the amount of victims and the time that has elapsed since the violation, 21 years. With regards to uh, the um, authorities, the court has shown that uh, actions have been carried out to solve the case. With that perspective, the state has exhausted all lines of investigation, has analyzed all of the evidence, and has also tried to find the bodies of those who, were who are disappeared. Now, with regards to direct reparations, in the reads presented by the state at the commission, it has shown that this is an effective remedy, especially considering when that the responsibility of the state is being discussed because it did not prevent the death of the deaths of the victims from happening. And this is important because uh, the family members of five victims are still facing a proceeding. Right now, we are waiting the decision of the appellate uh, court this is why the uh, state considers that the uh, direct reparation stage has not been exhausted and the case should be declared inadmissible. Now, the second cause for inadmissibility about the reform of its fourth stage has to do because in the case of Mr. Carrera and Bernal, their family members have already presented reparation actions that have definite answers issued by an administrative court in 2005 and 2006. These two proceedings argued that this responsibility of the state on the deaths of these people, these victims, and the court pointed out that there was no evidence that the area in which the victims were working was a high risk area, therefore, that the National Attorney General's office was not obliged to provide special protection to the victims. With regards to the fact that the petitioner is asking the commission to reanalyze the responsibility of the state, this goes to the uh, fourth international stage. And all these proceedings were developed with all uh, with all warranties and respecting all international standards. That is why the state thinks that this is inadmissible with regards to the responsibility of the state about the death and the forced disappearance of these two victims. Um, because of this, considering these arguments, the state asks the commission to declare the inadmissibility of this report. And now I will give the floor to Andres Sarmiento who will tell you about the position of the state with regards to the merits of the issue. 
Thank you, commissioners, representatives of the commissioners and representatives of the victims. As was already mentioned with regards to the merits of the case, specifically, I will discuss three issues. First of all, that the facts that being, are being analyzed are not a forced disappearance. Second, the lack of responsibility, international responsibility for the state. And third, the lack of international responsibility with regards to articles eight and 25 of the American Convention. With regards to the first point, the Inter-American Court has pointed out that in order to consider a situation as a forced disappearance, three elements must occur. For this case, the second requirement that the, um, the, um, this must be done by state agents is central because it does not meet the requirement. These were not state agents. This is why it was not a forced disappearance. Now, in the case of Garcia versus others versus Colombia, the court stated that in order to grant responsibility for the transgression of the duty to respect with regards to the actions of third parties, it's not enough to use the acquiescence or um, orders. It is necessary to um, show the acquiescence of the state in these circumstances. If we apply this standard to this issue, you will see that there is no evidence that the uh, deprivation of the liberty of the victims had anything to do with the collaboration of state agents. And actually one fundamental aspect that the commission should assess is that the petitioner is trying to um, say that there's responsibility because uh, the uh, state knew about the actions of this paramilitary group in Colombia in the area where the facts occurred. And this is a clear indication that there was no direct intervention in the, of the state in these deaths. This is why from the perspective of the international law, this is not a forced disappearance. Now, moving on to the second point with regards to the lack of re international responsibility on the death and disappearance of the victims, the central aspect has to do that there was no known um, risk situation for the state. So the state would like to point out that the responses there are by some state entities only go to show the presence of the of armed groups, but it would not appear that they meant an immediate risk for the development of activities in the area and actually according to the ruling of Cesar in 2006 with regards to the direct um, rem um, direct reparations represented by family members, the decision said that the only signal of this was an intelligence report expressing that in 2000, they did not know about the existence of armed groups in the area, and they only mentioned groups from the FARC and the LL, but no other groups. That is why the state think it's clear that the commission should declare the lack of international responsibility for the violations on articles four and five. And then finally, with regards to the lack of responsibility in, re in relation to articles eight and 25 of the convention, the state would like to point out that it acted diligently in, this, in the investigation and the proceeding and trial of those responsible for the fact it has also sought for the uh, remains. And apart from the measures already mentioned by my colleague, Mr. Romero, about the uh, lack of exhaustion, I would like to also point out that between uh, that up to 2014, there were all kinds of um, investigation measures. And all these led to the most recent development in the investigation and led to the accusations of other people, of other people considered responsible with regards to the search for the remains. I will now give the floor to Ms. Sandra Bertis Herrera, who coordinates the group for the search and identification of missing people who will discuss what we have already presented on our report with regards to the search of the bodies. Thank you. Good morning to the representatives and to the victims and to the commissioners and all the participants of this hearing. I will present two things. First, I would like to present the national search plan, and then I would like to present the search activities for this case. 
the Office of the Attorney General of the Nation has been charged of the search of disappeared people in Mar in the framework of several laws with regard to the national search plan that includes four phases, a collection of information, second, analysis of information, three, estimation, and four, technical and scientific studies. And then we have the ceremony to handle the bodies to the family members. With regard to the activities of search that have been carried out, we have two periods of time that should be stressed. The first period has to do between the date of the facts in 2000, and we did all the research activities that were required. And the second period of time has to do between, uh, has to do with year 2010, that is within the framework of the national search plan. From the very beginning, when we realized of the fact, the Office of Specialized Violations of Human Rights of the Office of the Attorney General developed all the activities that were necessary. It is important to say that the actions of search have been agreed with the family members of the victims. With regard to exhumation, we agreed with the family members and their representatives in order to provide assistance to all the family members. We also have the support of the unit of reparation and assistance to the victims that provides economic reparation and also psychological assistance. This has to do also with the transfer and the traveling costs of the family members that go to the site in which bodies are being exhumated. Also, the Office of the Attorney General recognizing family members for this fact has provided them with job opportunities. Several members of those families are working for the office. It is also important to highlight the unit of attention and reparation of victims has repaired one of the family members or the families of the seven victims. And also the Office of Human Rights has recognized uh, also, the proceeding for the crime of threats. Please, can you wrap up your presentation because we are running out of time. Yes, Commissioner. With regard to search activities, these are conducted by criminalistic specialized teams that include different teams, photo photographers, anthropologists, dentists that verify all the information. And it has been possible to identify the, a working area of 10 hectares that in a permanent way and in a constant way and up to date, we are conducting different inspections. It is also important to mention that seven bodies have been found. They were analyzed by the lab of human identification of the CTI and those bodies did not correspond to our colleagues of the CTI. It's also important to highlight that the proceeding that we have developed between 2000 and 2010 was agreed through the instructor prosecutor with the criminalistic team of the CTI and the Kruge, and they adjusted all the activities according to the national search plan. And we decided to continue with the development of the plan. In 2011, we uh, received the families that were represented by Equitas. We took 27 reference samples to the family members of the victims. And those samples are in the bank of genetic profiles of the state. And we review the database to try to identify if there is any coincidence between the bank and also the samples of the exhumated bodies in these times. To conclude, Madam President, I would like to say that this report will be presented in detail with dates and figures after the hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please remember to send all the information necessary after the hearing. We are running out of time, but now I would like to give the floor to my colleagues, the commissioners, so that they can make specific questions, even though there might not be enough time to answer those questions. 
you can send that information after the hearing. I would like to make an important clarification regarding resolution 116 that was mentioned in the allegations of the state. The resolution was a measure adopted by the commission to address the procedural backlog. And this has to do, this has nothing to do with the replies of the parties during the admissibility stage. This is a measure that the commission has taken to advance on procedural backlog. But this is an administrative measure that the commission decided to make in order to address the procedural backlog of the commission. Commissioner Matisha is requesting the floor. Thank you. First, I would like to ask the representatives of the victims if after assessing the justice and peace law, if you consider that the law has contributed to the truth in this proceeding. And with regard, and for the state, I would like to ask the following question, taking into consideration what representative or, um, Ortegonia has said it has to do with the role of women. I would like to ask the representatives of the state, what is the gender perspective or how you are applying the gender perspective in these reparation processes for family members of disappeared persons? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mantilla. I don't see Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner Rallon would like to make any questions. Thank you, Madam President. I don't have questions. And I just want to say that in this hearing, it's been very useful to listen to the different perspective of all the parties. And I have written down that information. Thank you. Commissioner Rallon, com thank you. Commissioner Hernandez, do you have any questions? I have a question for the state and it's related to the questions I made to the alleged victims. And the question has to do with the following. What type of protection or support have you provided to the victims of the disappeared persons? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. I don't know if the Executive Secretary Marisol Blanchard would like to make any questions. Thank you, Madam President. I don't have questions. Thank you. With, uh, together with the questions of my colleagues, I would like to add the following. What has been the involvement of the victims in the search processes mentioned by the state towards the end of their intervention? If they are coordinating the work together with the victims, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I would like to know the relationship or the coordination between the national search plan and the uh, role of the office of the attorney general. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I would like to know if those mechanisms work together. So those are the questions. I would like to know how much time we have left. Now I would like to give the floor to the petitioners for five minutes, and then the state will have the floor for five minutes. Uh, please remember that those things that you are not able to reply, please send that information. We did a, and you have a deadline, a deadline of one month for that. Thank you, Madam President. First, with regard to your, the question made by Commissioner Jelisa Mantilla, I would like to say that uh, we have talked to uh, the family members uh, about the lack of support of the justice and peace law to the clarification of the case for some reasons. First, because a group of paramilitaries of the Northern Bloc uh said that they were going to contribute to the truth under the framework of the justice and peace law and this did not happen different members of this paramilitary group of the northern bloc benefited from the law they gave contradictory statements they gave 
inconsistent statements. There were several inspections conducted and the results of those inspections were negative. And in spite that their contributions were not effective, these people received the benefits. Second, at the time, uh, in the framework or within the framework of the justice and peace law, there was no coordination between the law and the ordinary justice jurisdiction. And therefore, uh, some of the effects of the justice and peace law were not considered in the ordinary courts. Uh, but for some of our interventions in which we requested and therefore the facts have not been treated in a comprehensive way. And third, that is related to the search and the lack of coordination that I mentioned before. An important thing regarding the passing of the law on peace and justice is that the Office of the Attorney General have more resources, technical and human resources to conduct the investigations. But before, uh, the current prosecutor of the investigation, we saw that there was a lack of due diligence in the investigations conducted under the law of justice and peace. And there was no coordination with the prosecutor office that knew of the investigation. And because of those three reasons, we believe that the law of justice and peace was not an important contribution to the case. And we think that it would be important for these failures to be solved. And there is a fourth element that I would like to mention that has to do, that ha does not have to do with the investigation and the search, but has to do with reparations. Some years ago, I don't remember the date, there was a judgment in the case Salvatore Mancuso, one of the most important paramilitary commanders uh, in within the framework of the law on justice and peace. In that judgment, there is a recognition of the victims that disappear in the CTI. And even though there are uh, reparations that have been ordered, this has not been complied with. And we have also received information from three groups of people or victims. And all the members of the families were not included in that judgment. And therefore that is an incomplete recognition. And if the compensation or the reparation that was ordered, uh, all the, or if they decide to reparate some of the victims, not all the family members of the victims will be reparated. With regard to the question made by the president, we would like to recognize that in recent years, there has been a good coordination work with the prosecutor, the prosecutor in charge has been provided a space for the victims or for the family members of the victims to participate in the different actions conducted and the victims and the representatives and the organization Equitas has been able to participate with a technical perspective or with the technical approach, especially when everything relay, regarding everything that has to do with forensic anthropology. So we would like to say that we've seen an improvement in this regard in recent years, but this has not been like that all the time. Search activities are now better, but we did a lot of actions so that the office of the prosecutor included the family members of the victims in those processes, taking into consideration what the prosecutor said that the unit of victims are there to provide transport costs and to provide psychosocial support. This help was limited in some, on some occasions. And even though since 2000, there is a search plan for the case that was conducted together with the Equitas organization, this plan was not executed in a constant way. And therefore in some years, no actions were conducted. And in some years we saw an increase in the activities and the actions, especially with the enforcement of the peace agreements. And now we have more technical resources for the search of the victims. And this is just another anecdote. In Colombia, there was only one geo radar for searching the victims. And therefore the actions depended on the availability of that geo radar. 
and there was only a person in Colombia that knew how to manage that geo-radar. It was an anthropologist of the dust. And if the geo-radar and the anthropologist were available, we were able to conduct the search. And therefore, in many years, we the actions uh, for searching the victims were not constant and we didn't, didn't have the elements to conduct the search. And with the passing of several laws and regulations, this situation has improved recently. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the state for five minutes. Thank you, Honorable Commissioner. Effectively, for the question, it's important to mention that we have institutional protocols that have been created after the creation of the unit of attention and reparation of victims within the framework of law 1408 from 2010. With a differentiated approach for the victims, we pay a special care to the family members of the victims. With regard to the participation of the victims, we always invite all the family members to the different actions that have to do with exhumation, but not all persons are able to attend those exhumation activities. It's also important to mention that we have consolidated information and detailed information uh, for the management of the victims with a differentiated approach taking into consideration the also we have behavior patterns for the support of the victims so we the unit tries to help the victims we are also working together with the uh, search unit that was created after the peace agreements and Convention 030 of 2019 has been created. And through that convention, we have all the activities in coordination. Coordination. So we work together with a team of search and identification of disappeared persons. And they work uh, as a supplementary body to the judicial bodies. And we have been conducting several joint activities. It's also important to mention that one of the laws has decided to um, remove uh, some of the victims when they tell the truth. If they don't tell the truth, they are removed from those proceedings. And regarding the questions and the answers to those questions, we can present all the information with the specific information and details. Thank you. I would like to use this time to answer some of your questions with regards to the participation of the victims and also the way in which we are searching for the remains. That search plan that is being carried out right now on, on, since the year 2010 was agreed upon with the representatives of the victims. It is important to point out that the area where the investigation is being carried out is an area agreed upon with them considering the evidence and after certain uh, investigations that have been carried out. It's an extensive area of about eight hectares. It is also important to say that the climate conditions are very important when uh, doing this search, especially considering the area where this is being carried out, this can only be done two times a year in the May of, in, sorry, during March and then approximately during August. This search plan has been, um, has been carried out exhaustively, perhaps with some problems last year because of the pandemic, but what's important is to say that the plan was always followed. And every time one of these activities was performed, the families were notified. And those who attend usually meet with the um, general attorney and the team. 
who explain them, the new developments in the investigation and the way in which they will search for the remains. The same occurs after the activity has been carried out. They are informed of the preliminary reports after what was achieved in that um, investigation in the activity. And it's important to take that into account and the state will complement this information with the written report. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you to the petitioners and the state. As I pointed out, we'll be uh, waiting for your written information within a month. Let me see, sorry, I got lost. I don't know what day it is today, but uh, an exact month for now, from now. And I would like to thank especially Ms. Rosa Osorio and Matilde Bernal for their testimonies today, them and their family members. You have the Commission Solidarity and all the family members of the officials of the technical investigation team who are part of this case. And also I would um, I will write down the information provided by Ms. Ortigona at the beginning about the death this week of Justa Cáceres, I think was her last name, I apologize, Correa. Justa Correa, I apologize, who was, who started this petition. So I think it's very important to mention her and pay tribute to her because I imagine it's been many years of fighting and I would like to express my solidarity to her and her family members. I'm really sorry she was unable to see the result of her work. Thank you all. Thanks to the state and the petitioners, but most especially to Ms. Rosa and Matilde and her family members. I hope you're well. Thank you all.